Welcome back to our conversation with Senator Elizabeth Warren. First of two parts, by the way, we'll have more uh, next Sunday at this time. Senator, in a widely discussed recent New York Times piece you wrote, you argued the electorate strongly sides with your argument that inflation can be largely blamed on corporate price gouging and that the democratic argument for making the rich pay more of their fair share is a political winner. But the president's been making that inflation case about price gouging and his approval ratings haven't budged. And the tax the rich argument, that's almost older, an older part of the democratic rhetoric than me. And now you're talking old. Uh, with very mixed electoral results. What makes you think these arguments are a path to victory? Well, I start, and you're exactly right, by citing the actual data. How many people support real change? Uh, by a margin of two to one, people support a wealth tax. By a margin of three to one, people support a minimum tax on corporations that are making huge profits, these billion dollar corporations. Um, and uh, the point of this is to say what we want to do is popular, but we actually need to do it. You want to you want to have the American people really get excited, then don't talk about the things we want to deliver, actually deliver them. I guess what I'm getting at is, yes, people tell pollsters that it's unfair that a teacher or a nurse pays more share of their income than Jeff Bezos mm -hmm. or, or, or whoever. Um, there's also polling that shows people think it's unfair that they had to struggle to pay off their student loans, but now you want the president to wipe that debt uh, clear actually, for everyone. Actually, you want to check your numbers on that, John, okay. by a margin of two to one. Americans say, yes, we should cancel a chunk of student loan debt. So even people who've paid off their student loan debts, even people who never had to take out student loan debts, the majority say... Let's cancel student loan debt. You know, remember on student loan debt, 40% of the people who have student loan debt are not college graduates. They're people who tried and couldn't afford to pay for college, so they had to borrow money. But then life happened. Got pregnant, worked three jobs, uh, mom got sick, family moved to another town. And now they earn what a high school grad earns, and they're trying to deal with student loan debt. That is bone crushing for tens of millions of Americans. In addition, it's a racial wealth issue. Uh, African Americans borrow more money to go to school, borrow more money while they're in school, have a harder time paying it off when they get out of school. The president could cancel $50,000 of student loan debt and he could help close the black-white wealth gap for those who have student loan debt, the Latino-white wealth gap, he also could help close the gender wealth gap and just equality, help bring a little equality in this country. And I think that's why, by a ratio of two to one, people support canceling student loan debt. I, I can't let the moment pass sure. uh, having a member of the Armed Services Committee mm -hmm. uh, without asking, are there any circumstances which would cause you to vote to authorize direct U.S. military intervention in the situation in Ukraine? I haven't seen any yet. What would it take? Well. I don't want to do hypotheticals about how bad can it get over there. What I want to see is what we should be doing and are doing. So the president right now has promised more aid to Ukraine. He's just about spent the $14 billion that Congress authorized a few weeks ago. I am prepared to help the president with that so that he has more money, both for arms and for humanitarian relief to Ukrainians are standing up for democracy around the world. They are standing up against dictatorships, and we should support them, and I'm all in for that. If Russia used nuclear weapons, would well, that, would all bets be off? Look, if Russia uses nuclear weapons, we all know that bets are off all around the world. Uh, the president lately has been, I don't, I don't know if he's been amping up his rhetoric, but he's been using words like genocide. Yeah. And the State Department that is also the official State Department position, as I understand it, that almost sounded to me like a leader trying to prepare his public for an escalation of the situation, prepare for war. It did, am I uh, imagining that? You know, I, I don't see it that way, John. I see it as we are talking about how to amp up as the Russians continue to bear down on Ukraine. But... It isn't necessarily militarily. 
look what we've already done economically. We have gotten our allies together. I think this has been the biggest strength of the president is to keep all the allies together on this and imposed economic sanctions, including uh, cutting the Russian banks out of the SWIFT system, unlike anything we've ever seen before. You've seen American companies and other European companies cut their ties with Russia, move out of Russia. But we haven't done all we can do on the economic front, on the political front, on the diplomatic front. I believe we're going to see more ratcheting up, more pressure on Putin. Remember, those are the tools of warfare in the 21st century as well. Senator, I appreciate it. In part two, uh, I'll be uh, offering up some annoying political questions, so that should be fun. That'll be fun. Thank you for sticking around for that, and thank you for joining us. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.